what is up guys and of course as always welcome back to another episode of who was really better where this week we're going to compare the most interesting aspect of generation 7 that not being the pokemon themselves but the buff in hail hail for has been clearly for the longest time here the worst weather phenomenon in the pokemon meta it might very well still be but the buff it got was absolutely significant one of those buff is what these two Pokemon represents, that is the Hail Sweeper, the Slush Rush. It's a new concept, and while it hasn't thrived by any sense of the imagination, it still has been a really, really good indicator for this Pokemon, because these two, even though Alolan Sasslet is introduced newly here, um, had it not been for Slush Rush, it might have been very forgettable. And Bertic, of course, getting a really, really solid ability for its already kind of shaky viability as a whole. So what we're going to do is go over the hail itself, but also talk about why it's important that the hail works for these significant Pokemon. We're going to compare stats, abilities, and move pools to find out which one of these two that really are better. And we're going to start off with Bertic being introduced first. And then we're going to go over, of course, the history of Bertic. And while it hasn't been the strongest till Generation 7, so that said, let's talk about Beartic. So right, Beartic. I really just gonna handle this and force Generation 7 boosted stats, which is why we're gonna cover that first. In Generation 6 or Flam was introduced, it didn't leave a mark at all as probably one of the slowest ice types there is basically, and that's not a good thing because ice type, not that good of a defensive type, you're not able to necessarily soak that well. However, when it was introduced, it had 110 in its attack. That basically meant that it wasn't able to really hurt anything to survive anyway. So the boost in its attack in Arisa 7, yeah, it stands out. So with that said, why is Ice slapping so bad? Well, you resist Ice. That's it. Um, and you're weak to finding Sun, Rock and Steel, three of those being actually priority possibilities. So overall, Ice slapping is a all things consider a really really bad defensive typing is probably the worst absolutely in the bar with the bug type combination and rock as it just isn't that very well combined with anything though that said there are benefits to it and ice types in general are very good offensive typing hurts a lot of pokemon really well with super effective damage and a stab boost to that might actually be the difference between a kill and just hurting something really badly hence why we need to of course embrace the ice type combination that said, HP stat distribution is, or stat distribution overall, really, are fair, to say the least, on Beartic, as really high HP, 95 base, 1 third attack. That's, that is ridiculously a lot of damage output in one Pokemon. I'm just going to have that said. Defenses are split in 80, which is great when you complain it to 95 base. That's shit. That's a lot of natural bulk, actually. Uh, there's a special attack at 70. It isn't like a lot of special attack, but it is usable and could be significant for this Pokemon as a whole. And the speed tier is bad. 50 base speed as stated here. It's a slow, really hard hitting Pokemon, but as stated here, the typing itself aren't allowing it to actually be forced to be that slow to function properly. And um, here's where the abilities comes in. We have Snow Cloak, which is absolutely not usable here um, do not never use this as you really don't want to get or rely on an evasion boost to be able to potentially soak ahead however we have swiss swim and slush rush swiss swim was introduced in generation 5 it made this pokemon a niche in rain teams but the only benefactor had was it had ice stab and fire was reduced in the rain um i'll say like this it is probably one of the worst Swift Swimmer, but just that it has the better factor to pull that off is amazing. It's a major merit and should be considered as such. And then we have Slush Trust going through this generation, which for all sense and purposes is the better abilities because it does force a certain way of playing as you go in with a nice time. But as a whole, you can pull two weathers with this Pokemon and it will be just fine in both. It doesn't excel in its Swiss Swim ability as Capitals, for example, being another low tier Pokemon is significantly better, but the accessibility of pulling a Swiss Swim is something that I highly, highly merit I think is a very good ability for this Pokemon. So what do the Moo Pool tell us about Beartic? Well, first and foremost, Aqua Jet. Amazing. Um, well, it isn't Stabus, it's not an Ice Shard. All things considered, that would have been, of course, better. 
Uh, Opgradehead still allows it to have a stable priority, which being a slow factor for it means that it has a way to ship up Pokemon that try to revenge kill it. And even with Squishwim, you can get this Aquajet boosted, and that's that's amazing. Like that has to be considered a really, really strong and weird merit for it. Then with have Avalanche that should never be used for this Pokemon with Brick Break, Bulk Up if you want to enforce that Bulk on it, Encore which actually isn't half bad if you're facing off against a Pokemon that could very well try to recover versus you because you're speedier. Uh, then we have Facade, we have Focus Blast, Focus Punch, Frustration, we have Grass Knot, Horn Claw, Rock Slide, Ice Punch, Icicle Crash. Those two ice moves are your main stab moves. Uh, we're going to cover Blizzard, but that's just something that needs to be kind of covered. Uh, we have Low Kick, which is amazing, Night Slash, Play Rough, Power Punch, Sword Stance, Taunt, Shadow Claw, Stone Ant, Substitute, Super Power, Rock Tomb, Throat Chop, Water Pulse, John, Surf, and Toxic. Now, I, I cover Grass not for obvious reasons here, and that is that while it isn't a stab or the special attack isn't that really benefiting, just that it able to pull certain matchup to be able to Grass Knot, for example, right Perrier or Ride On in NU, it could very well KO them. Uh, Icicle Crash will fail to do so because of their natural high bulk, but the Grass Knot might just be what covers it and push it over the edge. Bulk Up is a good setup if you try to be more defensive. It has a state of the bulk already to pull something like that off. Uh, it just lacks the proper recovery. John could very well open up a switch for you. Uh, power Punch if you want to go with that route. Low Kick and Super Power are the most benefiting one. Taunt if you go going against a more defensive matchup. And just overall, there are combinations that are really well. I think the only thing Beatik misses out on is potentially actually Earthquake. Um, not having that is um, is making it harder for you fending off against Steel types. Um, not to say that Super Power won't solve it, but it just you don't want to put yourself in an environment where you get even worse attack and defense. Steel types have usually enough bolt to take at least one. It could very well take three if you lose your power. And of course, being in risk of actually being KO'd, which is clearly never a good thing. Low kick is to be considered, but it's good to keep that in mind that that's your main merit, which is why Earthquake would have been tremendous here. And of course, play rough. It's awesome. Um, it means flying types could very well lose versus you in this matchup. Um, if they're forced to go for Mag Punch, you're carrying something like Shuffleberry. Yeah, play rough might as well take them out. It should always be considered that while. Beatic itself might be slow and, of course, very sustainable to super effective damage. It is very unlikely that all the Pokemon that are going up against it trying to fend it off can survive its one of the base attack because, well, all things considered, it's bulky enough to take a hit and retaliate. And during, of course, a potential weather phenomenon that boosts your speed, it could very well go first and KO you and even go for Sword Stance. It might be very, very tough to switch into. But as a whole, its move pool has a few things to consider and. I would never, for example, carry something like a C crystal on this Pokemon because it needs reduction or something to get its recovery back because it doesn't have, like, if this Pokemon gets shipped down or reinforced, go take self rock damage or whatnot, it's going to fall eventually because it gets shipped down easily and uh, with priority weakness, it could be a Pokemon that can fall into very bad places at time. But as a whole, it's an interesting Pokemon. I like it about Slush Rush and Swiss Swim. While, like I said here, it doesn't excel at Swiss Swim. It still has merit, and um, it has to be something to watch out for, more so in leagues, where all of a sudden you might be forced. So, Generation 7 gave us an upgraded Sasslash, in theory. We have a lot of Sasslash here before, and I covered its merits why it was better than a regular Sasslash, but we only compared it as its type combination might be better. That's really about it. That's really all, all I said. Sandslash just falls short as a whole against Excredil, of course. And uh, yeah, compared to, yeah, alone Sandslash did have more to offer. That said, that's really all, like I said, we covered. And I never really consider its sweeping capabilities. I would say it has some, but it absolutely isn't as strong as Beatic. So, what do we got here? Well, first and foremost, we got really, really bad picture of his resistances, so we're gonna cover them as well as I can. The main merit of Alolan Sand Slash is that due to the steel typing, while we get a few more weaknesses, absolutely, we also get resistances. It means we have matchup where we can actually come in naturally. Uh, we are immune to poison, 
uh, we are stronger resisting ice this time around. We're resistant bug, dragon, fairy, flying, psychic, grass, and normal. We're now weak to ground, uh, which is something ice isn't, and we're now very weak to fighting and, and uh, fire. So we are absolutely going out to max punch this time around. That's hands down, that's what's happening. Uh, but as a whole, I definitely think Steel is complementing Ice very well. It does avoid some of the worst issues and actually get a fair few more resistances. Sandslash might have been better as a Steel alone, but as it stands, and it's absolutely better than nothing. Stat-wise distribution, kinda shaky here. 75 HP, yeah, that's not a lot. Attack 100 is absolutely disseminable. That's, ooh, that's weird. Uh, 1 and 20 in its defense are really strong. Special attack is unusable. 65 in special defense, absolutely not as bulky as Beatic, but we are speeder at 65. The reason I think speeder is, men is really important to mention is that 65 base speed means that you do outspeed speed 95 base scoffers. Beatic are not able to pull that off, so Sandslash is absolutely able to pull that off, but it is weaker. So it's whether or not that's a merit or not, but it's worth keeping in mind. Uh, and of course abilities, we have Slush Trust, which is the only relevant one, but have Snow Cloak, much like Petek, it's... Ah. <laughs> that's really all I can say. But Slush Trust is your main ability, and this is a Pokemon that can do few roles actually in Hail. It's not born to be a sweeper, but it has the accessibility to, to pull off to be a potential sweeper. So with that said, what does the Moopool tell us about Sand Slash? I say it says a lot. Um, first and foremost, we have Aqua Tail, which is meaningless filler, but we have that. Aurora Veil, yeah, this is a Pokemon that are used in UU, uh, in underuse, you know, the second highest tier. Third, if you are counting Ubers, never mind that. Um, it's using UU mainly as an Aurora Veil setter for making Pokemon in its team to be able to sweep. I find this an absolute merit and should absolutely be considered as such. Um, a lot of merits speaking today. I don't know, meant to kind of overuse that word, but hey, here we are. Uh, we have Brick Break, Drill Run, Earthquake, Facade, Focus Blast, Focus Punch here too, Ice Punch and Ice Crust and Ice Spear, which are humane Ice Stabs. We are not having any priority, as far as we are aware at least, in Generation 7. Uh, we got that, however, in Pokemon Let's Go. Hopefully we get that in uh, Generation 8 too. Aisha would be just incredible, this Pokemon to have naturally. Uh, we have Knock Up, which is amazing, Leech Life, Night Slash, Poison Jab, Protect, Rapid Spin. Yes, this Pokemon is a spinner, as is a regular Sand Slash, and since it's not weak to rocks, it actually is able to pull a spinning roll quite right. Uh, we have Rest, Return, Rock Slide, Stealth Rocks, yes, Stealth Rocks too. Substitute, Super Fang, Soul Stance, Toxic, Exissa, Crush Claw, Curse, Defensive Curl, Hold on on that one. <laughs> Air Lays, Amnesia, Counter, Iron Tail, Icy Wind, um, Ice Ball, Iron Defense, Iron Tail, Metal Burst, Bulldoze, and Chip Away. Now, just gonna cover Defense Curl. The reason it's so good, or in theory good, is because you can pull a Defense Curl and then use Ice Ball. Ice Ball is boosting yourself like, uh, like Rollout. First time it's 30 base power, then 60, then 120, then 240, it just keeps on giving. If you go for a defense curl before that, that power is doubled. So you start off with 60, 120, directly, it's gonna, it's gonna boom. I wouldn't say it's a viable strat, but just that you're able to pull that off. There are very few Pokemon that does this. It's basically Chancing Golem, and that's it. <laughs> Mil tank, I guess. Um, but overall, uh, the, the reason I, I'd say. Um, um, or I should Iron Head is of course your main stab in uh, in Steel. Have, haven't had Bullet Punch either, which is super unfortunate. Um, but the main merit of Sand Slash here is merit again. Uh, the benefit <laughs> of Sand Slash is that it has a lot to offer a team. Um, it can absolutely sweep. That sword stance, you know, it's there. It has a secondary stab, which is something that I think is very very good. It also have Earthquake, which means it has filler to. Most matchup it might be forced to be fending off against and staying if it is faster. Uh, I absolutely see this as an awesome accessibility to pull off. Um, but it's not better than Beatic in that aspect. It just it can't do those roles and probably succeed at them. 
but the main reason you want to use a lone sand sledge is that it's it can be used standalone as it is defensive enough to pull off some matchup and has resistances to win versus certain matchup you can use it as a spinner you can use it as a stealth rocker you can use it as you can use both <laughs> at the same time you want to and you can use it as an aurora veil setter um you can even use this Pokemon as defensively with super fang and toxic and that's awesome there are so many things Sandslash can do that are really, really, really giving the team as a whole um, all the benefits you could potentially, well, need to. Uh, Sandslash fills a lot of holes in teams, and being a spinner and a, of course, stealth rocker that aren't a ground type has its benefactors and merits. Ha! There we go again. Uh, so this matchup, for me at least, means is which Pokemon can do more work as a whole and I think it shouldn't come as a surprise really that well Sandslash has is a more team player and has a lot more to offer the team as uh, as a whole Beatic absolutely I would say are a better sweeper and a wall breaker because it has a stronger attack it doesn't necessarily need to set up to sweep um, and it has a special attack that actually are usable and um, the combined bulk while interesting is uh, just maybe not enough to, to make it as a, as it is a soul ice type, it just kind of falls short in every possible way. I wouldn't say Sandslash has that at all. Well, yes, we have two weaknesses that absolutely kills it, and uh, weak to, of course, ground based damage. Those are absolutely issues, but the benefactor we get here of a lot of resistances is a matchup we can win and not for the neutral damage. Really pushes Sandslash over the edge. It doesn't matter if it is. In theory, less bulky, where it actually are able to take more hits naturally and soak them better than Beatic can do. And of course, as a sweeper, even though Beatic has more attack to offer, Sandslash is, in all sense and purposes, safer as a Hail Sweeper that actually can beat, for example, um, Alolan Sceptile due to the extra speed it gets. It, Beatic just isn't there. The base 50 year is holding it back so much that it isn't able to actually sweep even when it has the double speed it just is too slow while if Pokemon's are slower yeah Beatic will win against them it will absolutely hurts but just the sand slash can even though it is weaker pinpoint matchups and actually be faster it's safer to use as a roar of it can support a whole team there are just so much things that Alolan sand slash are given Beatic as stated a lot stronger than sand slash but there is where it all ends the main the, the merits here we go again i think that's like the ninth or tenth time i said it for for sandslash simply are so significant that it's absolutely no contest here sandslash the lowland form is absolutely better than Betic. so with that said what do you guys think do you guys use this these pokemon and try to use them well in any type of meta or leagues do feel free here to tell me i really want to listen to what you're thinking about these two pokemon and of course with that said here is the matchup for next week.